Development is the process of progressive and continuous change that generates a complex multicellular organism. It starts off with the gametes, where the sperm fertilizes the egg through a species-specific process. This creates a zygote, a fertilized egg with a diploid chromosomal complement generated by the fusion of the haploid male and female pronuclei. After fertilization, the zygote goes through several developmental phases to create an embryo. The embryo consists of a developing organism prior to birth. In mammals, the embryo refers to the early stages of development until the end of the organ building phase, known as organogenesis. After this, the developing mammal is a fetus until birth. At birth, it becomes a neonate. And it doesn't stop there. Development progresses to the maturation of the adult form and continues into senescence. A major achievement in descriptive embryology was the idea of a generalizable life cycle, where each animal species passes through similar stages of development. The first is fertilization, fusion of the mature sex cells, followed by fusion of haploid gamete nuclei to restore the full complement of chromosomes of that species. Next is the cleavage stage, a series of rapid mitotic cell divisions that divide the embryo without increasing mass. During cleavage, the cell cycle consists primarily of the S and M phases, otherwise known as the DNA synthesis and mitosis phase. The gap phases, G1 and G2, are essentially skipped. As a result, there is no increase in mass with subsequent divisions. This allows the cytoplasm to partition into many smaller cells called blastomeres. At the 16 to 64 cell stage in a vertebrate embryo, the blastomeres develop into a solid, berry-shaped ball called a morula. After further cleavage divisions, it comes to a point where cleavage comes to an end as the blastomeres form an early stage embryo consisting of a hollow sphere of cells called a blastula. If you took a cross section at the blastula stage, you would see that the blastula surrounds an inner fluid filled cavity called the blastocele. The next stage in embryonic development is gastrulation, a dramatic reorganization of the hollow blastula into a multi layered embryo called a gastrula. Here's an early gastrula, where the cells move during gastrulation to take up new positions and acquire new neighbors. At the start of gastrulation, a group of cells will buckle into the blastocele to form a shallow depression. Continued evagination forms the archenteron, the rudimentary alimentary cavity of an embryo. The open end of the archenteron and the first opening formed in the embryo is the blastopore. The blastopore is important because this will either become the mouth or anus, depending on the type of triple blastic organism we are talking about. In protostomes, the mouth forms from the blastopore. In deuteriostomes, the anus forms from the blastopore. As cells take up new positions, the archenteron will extend through the embryo to reach the surface at the other end to complete formation of the primitive gut. The embryo is said to be a gastrula when it contains the three germ layers that will interact to generate the organs of the body. During the differentiation process, we concern ourselves with the ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. These are the germ layers. When a zygote starts dividing and undergoes morphogenesis, the movement of cells, there are various layers formed that have a fate or derivative set of cells or tissues that it will become due to the nature of where it is found in the embryo. We use the universal colors blue, red, and yellow to represent the three germ layers. Blue is for ectoderm. The ectoderm are the cells that remain on the outside surface of the embryo following gastrulation. These cells will form the nervous system and the skin. Red represents mesoderm, the middle layer that gives rise to muscles, bone, connective tissue, reproductive organs, kidneys, blood, and most of the cardiovascular tissue. It is important to know that lower phyla like periphera and cnidaria contain two primary layers that give rise to all the tissues and organs of the animals, making them diploblastic, as they lack a true mesoderm. The third layer is the endoderm, represented by yellow. This is the innermost germ layer that forms the epithelial lining of the respiratory tract, gastrointestinal tract, and the accessory organs of the digestive system like the liver and pancreas. For the DAT, it is very high yield to have a basic understanding of what the derivatives of each germ layer are. The last major stage of embryonic development is organogenesis, where cells in the regions of the embryonic germ layers interact with one another through chemical signaling and rearrange themselves to develop into tissues and organs. An example of organogenesis is the process of neurulation. 
This begins as cells from the mesoderm form the nodal cord, a rod that extends along the dorsal side of chordate embryo. Signaling molecules secreted by these mesodermal cells cause the ectoderm above the nodal cord to become the neural plate. This is an inductive interaction as a group of cells influences the development of another group of cells through a close range interaction. After the neural plate forms, cells begin to change shape, which curves the structure inward. The neural plate rolls itself into a neural tube that will become the brain and spinal cord. The nodal cord will degenerate before birth, although parts of it will persist as the inner portions of the intervertebral discs.